Hey everybody, Craig McCormick here from DestructivePixels.com and today I want to show you how to integrate the Digimark service into your Lightroom so you can quickly apply a digital watermark to your images using Photoshop droplets. Check it out. Okay, so what is Digimark? Digimark is a plugin that actually comes pre-installed within Photoshop uh, that can apply an invisible watermark to your images. It uses what they call a chroma watermarking technology. Essentially what that means is that they embed your copyright information within the image itself while still remaining almost entirely invisible. It's built in within the noise and a lot of the, the data within your picture that you don't actually see so it's almost pretty much entirely invisible. 99.9% .9 invisible. One thing to remember though, that in order to use the Digimark service, you need to sign up for it and pay a yearly subscription service. And in case you're wondering, this service is entirely separate of anything related to Adobe. So how do I personally use Digimark? When I export an image from Lightroom, I have an export preset done that uses a Photoshop droplet, which I will explain later for those that don't know what a droplet is. I use this preset to create three versions of that image. One is the full res version of the shot that I export directly out of Lightroom, which is for my own records. I don't put it online. I just want a full res copy of that image. Then it opens up Photoshop and automatically creates uh, a 1500 pixel wide version of that image with a Digimark applied to it. And that that image size I use to put on my own website and I put on photo sharing sites like 500px and Flickr and so forth. And it also creates a 900 pixel wide version with the Digimark as well. And that is what I use for putting up on social media sites like Twitter and Facebook and things like that if I plan on using it. Honestly, I don't use the 900 pixel version that much, but it's always good to have that version on hand just in case you need to put a smaller version of that picture online. But you'll notice that any picture that I do put online has a Digimark embedded in it. And I do this purely as a way to prove that a shot is mine if a copyright infringement happens which they do on occasion especially for me last week i found someone infringing on one of my images using it in a travel website now the the reason why i use digimark instead of traditional watermarks is because you can crop or clone out a copyright logo but you cannot get rid of this digimark it is embedded within the entire scope of the image it's impossible to remove but the key here for you is to figure out what workflow is best suited for your needs. You may only want to put up full res versions of your images online, at which point I would certainly recommend having one that is non-Digimark copy for your records and having one that is Digimark that goes online. It really all depends on how you present your images online. Remember, this tutorial is on how to integrate Digimark, not on how you should present your images to the world. I'm merely showing you what my setup is because I find that it really works well for me. Now let's go ahead and I'll show you how to set up the droplet and the Digimark service and putting that in with Lightroom. Okay, so let's go on to creating the Digimark action and the droplet. But before we go any further, you'll need to have signed up for one of the Digimark service plans. I provided a link below to their plans page, which shows you the various plans that they have available. Personally, I use the professional plan, but the basic plan will work fine for just most people. Uh, once signed up, you'll need to link your Digimark ID to the Digimark plugin inside your Photoshop. This process is relatively straightforward, so I'm gonna skip ahead to actually creating the action and the droplet itself. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop, and the first thing you're going to need to keep in mind is that you'll need to create two Digimark actions, one for landscape orientated images and one for portrait orientated images. So let's go ahead and start with the landscape one as that's the more popular choice. So you'll need to open up your actions panel here. If you go up to, if it's not open, you go up to the windows, uh, on the windows, why am I? Ah, oh, because I'm in screen flow because that's smooth, Craig, well done. Yep, so you'll need to go here to the Windows palette and then you'll need to click on the Actions drop down. Okay, so if you go here, drop down and you click here on the little folded piece of paper, this will create a new action. Now let's call it Landscape Digi. I'm going to click Record. So from this point onwards, anything that I do within Photoshop will be recorded as an item. So the first thing we're going to need to do, obviously, is go File, Open. 
and you're going to this rel this really won't have that much of an impact on the final uh, workflow that the action and the droplet does but I'd like to go through and use uh, a fully a full size exported image that I have exported from Lightroom so let's just go ahead and I'll tell you what let's pick one of my latest pictures here there we go let's use this picture here just open this up in Photoshop and as you'll see here it's created open so that is the first action. We will override the the action here itself lists the picture that it opened. We can override that, but we really just need the open action within the action itself. So when we do the droplet and we export through Lightroom, that it actually opens up the image and doesn't just crash, which I've had before. I've done a lot of testing with this. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need to do for, for the way I have it set up, as I explained before, my pictures that I use mainly for going on the web are 1500 pixels on the long edge. So we're going to need to go up here to image, image size, and along the width, we're going to just pick 1500 pixels and conveniently that's 1000 pixels high. You're going to click OK. As you'll see, it'll have resized the image. Let's just bring it up a little bit so you can see it a bit better. Okay, now you go up here to filter. Digimark and you embed watermark. Now these these settings that you apply here will have a bearing on the the action that you end up using for forevermore up until the next year. Now copyright information you can have either an image ID if you use IDs for locating all your images or if you're using it for a client you can use transaction IDs but for most people copyright year is the way to go with it now every year I do create a new Digimark action I first started using Digimark in 2012 and now I'm using it in 2013 so I'll be putting in 2013 uh, image attributions uh, there's three options here restricted use do not copy adult content I don't shoot adult content, but uh, it is restricted use and you're definitely not allowed to copy my image. So I will be ticking those boxes. Now this watermark durability slider, I have played with it a lot. Now at, there's basically four options. One, which is less visible, but a lot less durable. Two, three, and four, and four is being the most visible, but also the most durable. Um, I found that four, uh, can be slightly more visible if I'm entirely honest um, if your picture has got a lot of noise in it especially in in the blacks and in the darks it adds a lot of color attribution noise uh, three but it's it honestly unless you're looking for it you aren't going to notice it so if you really want to be super super secure four is the way to go most people will not notice unless they're seriously looking for it at a hundred percent what I like to do I like to keep it around three because it's still pretty safe. So you can adjust the image big and small, but the watermark will still be still be there and into, uh, integral within the actual image itself. So I'm just gonna click okay. There you go, now my watermark is applied. It's now at the highest strength. So that's why I pick three, because between three and four, three seems like the happiest medium for me. Obviously you can pick higher if you want, but I prefer to go with three. Okay, so I'm just going to click OK. Uh, this is asking in the Digimark service that you'll have signed up for. Um, it will redirect you to your, uh, by default, it will link you to your Digimark account online. But in my copyright information that I've entered in on this picture, it redirects to my website. And I want them to be redirected to my website. I don't want them to go to the Digimark account. So I'm just going to click, would you like to replace the existing internet link with the one pointing to the creator of the image? I'm just going to click no. So that see here has embedded my watermark. Now for the next step, I'm going to go to file, save for web. Now this is important this section because this will determine where your pictures will go automatically within the action. Now. With these settings here, if I have it set to, because this is exporting out as a JPEG, if I export it out as 100% quality, nothing has changed, it's still a relatively big file, it's, you know, one meg. But if you go down, I've played a lot with the quality slider here, and what I found is between 80, well, let's actually just type in 80 rather than trying to do it. 80, you have C here, so it's gone from one to 444K, and it's you don't see a difference 
in size between original and optimized so you're gaining a lot of space okay so you're going to yeah I prefer going down to 80 uh, if you really want to save some space you can go down to 75 and you know it goes to 377 which is fine and you're still talking about a relatively big picture here I mean 1500 pixels by 1000 is still a pretty big image but let's go with 80 here okay so that is all done perfectly right 80 yep okay so you're gonna click Save and this is gonna determine where they all go now you'll see my file structure here is a bit messed up but for the most part I have everything set I have a web folder and I have two folders here one that's digi 1500 and digi 900 now these are all pre set up and I have these folders set up on purpose so whenever I'm exporting an image using the digimart droplet it does the 1500 pixel version of the image into the digi 1500 and then it does one into the digi 900 for the step later which i'll show you so of course i'm just going to click digi 1500 i'm going to click save now i already have this image saved out from into this folder but i'm just going to click replace for now okay so that has exported the image so now i already have one 1500 image with a digimark written into it fine but now we need to do a 900 version now, this is where people can get tripped up. What some people think they should do then is resize this 1500 pixel image down to a 900 pixel image. Now, the problem is that deteriorates the quality of the Digimark uh, embedding by quite a bit because you're resizing the image. So, what I do is I actually go up here down to edit, step backwards. So now I've gone back from embedding the watermark. So now I'm at that stage again. And I want to go back to the, basically to the beginning. So it's the original state of the image. So I'm going to go back one more time. And there we are, full res size of the image. I'm just going to zoom out again just so I can see the image a bit better. Now, again, we're going to do the exact same steps. I'm going to go to image. <coughs> Excuse me. Image, image size. I'm going to go to 900 pixels. Again, conveniently 600 pixels height. Okay, click OK. Now you have a tiny image. Okay, so now again, we go up to Filter, Digimark, Embed Your Watermark. And again, it has all that pre-saved out. I've got my Digimark ID, 2013, Restricted Use, Do Not Copy, and Watermark Durability at 3. I'm going to click OK. Again, look, it's just a tiny loss. If I had done the resizing, your watermark durability would be down here during the medium i've done a lot of testing with this trust me this is the best way to go with it click ok do i want to replace it no it's up to you in the end but i just don't i want it to originally redirect to my own website okay again file save for web again 80 quality i mean i'm looking at this on full screen you're probably looking at this through youtube or something i seriously can't see the digimark and i'm pretty good at picking this out because i've really looked hard and spent a lot of time playing with this and I can't see the Digimark. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to click save. Now remember before we picked Digi 1500 folder. Now I'm just going to click the Digi 900 folder. Click save. Again I have the old image that I've saved out before but I'm just going to replace that for now. And there we are done. We have created this action. Now the next step to do before you press the stop on the action button is to go file close don't save and stop so there you have created your landscape digimark uh, action so now we'll go ahead and i'll show you what to do next for creating it as a droplet and then bring it into lightroom okay so let's go ahead and export this action out as a droplet so we can drop it into lightroom okay so you're going to go up in inside Photoshop. You're going to go up to the file menu and you're going to go down to this mystery menu called automate and go to this scary thing called create droplets, which no one uses. All right now automatically pulls in the last action that you've created. So obviously it's going into the folder set that I created before called Digimart 2013 tutorial and it's pulled in the action landscape digi that we created before. Now, this little thing here is important. This first checkbox saying override action open commands this basically overrides the open command which was the first action that we did in our action and it was remember we were opening up the picture of the beach and stuff like that this basically overrides that it says whichever picture or image that you 
put up using this put into photoshop using this droplet it will do the following commands after this open action so that is a, an important one to you because otherwise it will just keep repeating the action on that old image and the save droplet um, this is basically where the droplet is being saved out as uh, it's just easier just to save it out on the on the desktop so just, just choose and just go to desktop uh, call it whatever you want let's just call it landscape digi just for sake of it just so we have it all the same I'm gonna capital D let's do my capitalization save in the desktop okay now you click OK and that's it it's now saved out if we go here to my desktop folder desktop landscape digi that is the digimark here the droplet rather not the digimark okay now what you're going to need to do next is go into lightroom so okay so let's go here let's pick yeah let's pick this image here of a shot i took recently in shanghai and we'll actually let's do it and create the the export preset which is the exact same preset that i use for all my images but let's do a new one with this new action okay so you're going to go down to export file export in lightroom now i have mine set up in a very specific way as i said before i have a full res version of the picture that i export out of lightroom that doesn't have any digimarkets for my reference i already have that set up it's in my dropbox folder and the folder is called final exported images here i mean oh, let's just go ahead and show you you'll see i showed you this is that web folder before where the digimarks are uh, in the folder next to it final exported images just click choose that's where the full size image is going i rename all my images to uh, the name that I actually give them within Lightroom. I do a lot of me metadata stuff. So I have it set up as a custom name with the actual name of the image itself. Depends on however you want to do it. This is the way I have it set up. Okay, so everything is pretty much standard here. I do output sharpening for screen. I write in my keywords because I do a lot of keywords. This is the most important bit here that we're going to be uh, focusing on post processing after export. Now, as standard with Lightroom, it comes with Show and Finder, Open in CS6, and a couple of other options here. And these are all the different, uh, as you can see here, these are all the different Digimarks and droplets and stuff that I've created over the years, experimenting with different things. But let's go here, and this is the last tab that you're going to want it to go to, is go to Export Actions folder now. And you can see here, these are all the different droplets that I have created over the years. I actually, tell you what, let me just get rid of these just so no more confusion going on here okay now we're going to go over here to the desktop folder you take that droplet that you exported just out of photoshop and you're going to drag it into the export actions so there you go we have the landscape digi dot app in there so let's close these finder windows out and there you go that's the same thing landscape digi after preset now, key thing, add. You go here and you click add. This adds it as a export preset. This is really, really important for me. This speeds up the entire workflow. This makes it going from, oh, I've got to remember to digimark my images to one stop, click, done. This is how Digimark has become like the go-to tool for me because it's very easily, <laughs> you can so easily apply uh, your watermark to it that you don't even need to think about it. And it automatically, by doing those steps, creating the 1500 pixel and the 900 pixel version, it instantly creates versions that you can put up on the web. Because no one wants to put up the full res, you know, 15 megabyte image. You know, not all of us are Trey Ratcliffe. So you're going to create a name. Now let's do, uh, obviously, let's keep it all the same. Let's do Landscape Digi. So there you go, it'll be saving the user presets folder. Go to create, and there we go here, we've got the landscape digi export preset. Now here, we're just gonna click on export and I'll show you exactly what it does. Export, you see up here, it's exporting the full res JPEG. Let's just wait for this to complete awkwardly. There we go, it's done. And as you see, opened up Photoshop instantly, started applying the watermark to it, I'm gonna click okay. Actually, let's click on it. Okay, again. Okay, done. That's it. You've exported your full res image, your 1500 pixel image with Digimark, and your 900 pixel image with Digimark. 
so easy. And just to prove my point, let's go into the Finder window. Let's open up my folder here, Final Exported Images. There is that image that I just exported, as you can see just now. For res, yeah, 23 meg. You go to Web, Digi 1500, and there's that picture. You go to Digi 900, and there's that picture. The export preset is a big thing in Lightroom that I love. And of course, by doing these added droplet things, it makes life a lot easier. So let's actually open up and drag this picture into Photoshop so I can show you what I mean. Now let's, I'm gonna look at this 100%, and I'm looking at it on my screen. I don't see a watermark. I'm fine. I know what I'm looking for, so I can faintly, faintly, faintly see it in the green, some sections of the wall. But for anybody else looking at this picture, they are not going to notice. I know what to look for because I've experimented with this for six months. But you're not going to notice the image. Any other person ain't going to ever notice it. But if you see one of your images being used online and you have your Digimark in it and you want to prove that it's yours, you copy it over and you open it in Photoshop and you go down to Filter, Digimark, Read Watermark. It reads it. There you go. There's your Digimark ID. It's a copyright year. And the attributions for restricted use do not copy. And there's the, the strength of the watermark pretty high up. So there you go. That proves and saves you a lot of time from having to prove that an image is yours. Because, you know, people can strip your copyright information from the metadata. They can clone out or crop out your watermark, you know, with a little copyright, blah, blah, photography 2013. But they cannot remove the Digimark. And that is the key thing here with this Digimark service. Okay, now next step is I would normally show you the portrait orientated version for the action and the droplet and then importing it into Lightroom and all the rest of it. But it's the exact same process as the landscape action that I just showed you before. But you've got to remember that instead of putting 1500 pixels or 900 pixels on the width, you put it on the height. So you're basically switching that number around. So and then it's exact same steps. You know, you export out the, the action, but you call it portrait digi instead of landscape digi. And you import it in the Lightroom, it's the exact same process. Now, I hope this was helpful. Uh, I love using Digimark. It's a great service. It's helped me a bunch of times. It's helped prove that images are mine and all the rest of it. So it's a really, really great service. If you have any questions further about how to use Digimark or how to integrate this into your workflow a little bit better, obviously feel free to leave a comment in the video below or you can email me at craig at destructivepixels.com. And if you want to go check out some of my portfolio stuff while you're there, it's destructivepixels.com. I've got my entire portfolio up there. I'm a Shanghai-based uh, landscape and travel photographer. So I enjoy having doing lots of travel, doing lots of landscape photography. So that's the main, main style of my work. Uh, okay, and I guess that's it. Thank you very much for checking out the tutorial. I hope it was helpful, and I'll see you again next time.